Sometimes books have unfathomably different cover editions Whoa, that make you question your entire life. So today, we're going to be talking about why that is and judging them. You actually have no idea what's coming up. Today, we're going to be judging books by their at times terribly tragic, but other times slay book covers. You might be thinking, yo, what makes you qualify to make this video? I present to you a chart. It it flips around. Booksellers, what do they want to do? They want to sell. Who do they want to sell to? The average person. And the average person reads 10 books. Judging by this graph, you can see that I'm not even average. I'm below average. So how about that? How, how are you going to get me to read, you know? Another fact, uh, you might be able to see here. What is that? Go I have eyes. And lastly, I've got design degree, so. Why, why, why are covers different in the first place? Number one, uh, we gotta talk about- Boom, look at that. Different audience. Like someone from New York is probably not gonna react to the same thing as someone from like Bradford or something. Sometimes the covers are all the same. They'll look at a cover and they think, you know what? Peng. Different publishers will just purchase the licensing rights to use the image and then they'll just use that. So let's see what the first cover has to say. I don't know how they got a picture of me leaving the Starbucks toilet after having one sip of coffee, but... I mean, My mind on the cover is having the roughest hangover of his life. At least they've got kind of the atmosphere of Dracula kind of right. Let's just look at a better cover. Look at the lush, vibrant, kind of blood red. This is a tragic sleigh because... Mm. The picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. To me, it's just kind of giving daddy dom smart compared to something like this you got the suggestion of decaying beauty and aesthetic this is tragic because no these two slay and the middle one i just i'm a, I'm a hoe for teal words of classics are kind of like the sheen of books i really hate faces on covers ellen degeneres and pete davidson are in a little a gay romance some of them are pretty okay and then you just have things like the, the iliad like crush me with them ties what? i don't want to cra crap on them too much because they probably don't have a big budget because they're meant to be affordable the next one you have no idea you have no idea what's coming up you actually have no idea what's coming up guess what book this is you won't get it you might get it but you won't get it leave a comment i'll give you three seconds three two it's hunger games <laughs> what brief did the designer get to me this reminds me of that weird couple in high school who are just like a little bit too obsessed with twilight and you're kind of like mm, should you be doing that in public my boyfriend's an anemic vampire <laughs> my boyfriend drowned on a nude beach so i had to jump in and save him so i'm still wearing clothes but he is not look at the rest of the covers in the series this is catching fire this is mockingjay firstly there is rain in every single one of this it's like whoever designed this was watching the notebook and they saw that kissing scene and they were like mm, you know what you know what very hunker games. Is that Peter? Is that President Snow? And why can't I tell the difference? And who is she? Because this woman has ginger hair and green eyes and Katniss has grey hair and olive skin and has dark hair. Covers are kind of slay. Kind of slay. Do you know why? Because it's so absurd. This is the original covers. Beautiful. Simple. Classy. The symbol of freedom with the birds, the Mockingjays. We've got the symbolism of even the arena. Catching fire. We've got the 12 strikes. And then we have Mockingjay breaking free from the arena, soaring, flying. There's not a star in heaven. These. Okay, so Scholastic has a new edition. This is me and the girlies. I'm not sure if it's exactly best for the Hunger Games where people are dying and there's war and death and bombs and starvation. For a special edition for collectibles you know what kind of slay here's another kind of contentious book cover so these are the rebel editions of the hunger games it's pretty neon and you might think what does that have to do with a rebellion it's about non-conformism it's about subversion i can see the kind of graffiti-esque influences of uh, pop pop and punk rock anarchy um but there's some things that are missing for example in catching fire where's the 12 you know and then mockingjay is meant to be kind of breaking so free and it doesn't Mm -mm. Twilight. <laughs> Twilight's got an, an update in their cover as well, and I want to show you. I want to show. Ah, uh, look at this. Should have gone to Spec Savers. It's, I think, the best cover for that time period in which it was published. Really know what to expect when you see these covers and you pick it up and you read it. You're like, yeah, that that fits. The I book. think these covers are for like ebooks one thing that kind of irks me about this and is the way they've broken up the lettering kind of doesn't make sense so we've got new moon which is fine it's like center line we have breaking dawn which is broken up by its syllables but then we have twilight 
Eight. And then we have Ickly Ips. A little life. So I have this edition. So the photographer is Peter Hajar. Is this about pain or is this about joy? And it's so ambiguous that it's almost uncomfortable. I feel like I'm intruding in on a space that I shouldn't have seen. I haven't read the book yet, but from what I've been told, it's like the most harrowing, life-changing canon event. I think it fits perfectly with that notion of like are we trespassing into their lives when we're reading this so i have a video coming up where i'm just gonna read a bunch of tiktok sad books it will be coming soon keep an eye out but look at the uk cover what there's nothing wrong with it they love type they love graphic you can see a little bit of like the us flats over here which is fine but just when you compare the two is there really even a competition let's play a game called guess what book this is i'm thinking it's some sort of ya dystopia and actually this compared to the hunger games i think german edition make a whole face with that but guess what book this is leave a comment below i'll give you three seconds three two one it's the song of a calais this is the us this is the uk version um so i'm loving the gold and the blue of this one but this one is just I love the heart symbolism with the arrow composition of it is slightly neater and my eye gravitates towards this one so clearly these two books went to the twilight school of marketing the, the deadline says the love that started it all okay cool 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 you got three seconds leave your comments below three two one it's pride and prejudice I love never dies okay we've got a beautiful flower what, what could that be about it's weathering heights now imagine being 12 years old you've just read twilight yeah, and you're in the water stain you see these covers and you read it Because that was me. That was me as a 12 year old. To me, this is tragic. Now, I need you all to reset because you're really not prepared for what's coming next. This is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Let me reiterate, this is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Have I mentioned the fact that this is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo? Did Six of Crows? Why is Six of Crows a highest book set in the God knows when? Uh, pink and blue. Is giving baby shower babes. What is going on? Tragic. For anyone who doesn't know what the original cover looks like, here's the original cover. Um, I love it when silhouettes turn into other silhouettes because I think, you know what? So smart. Like. So this is by Indigo Publishing and they've done it again. <laughs> I guess this one's not so bad, but the first one's so cute. It's kind of giving like Shakespeare and play, but they're trying to like make it hip for the youth and that. <laughs> the Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This one is very controversial and I'll tell you why. This is a sort of autobiography, sort of not, and it's really about a woman kind of spiraling into depression of society and just, it's a very depressing book. Also kind of racist. There's a view that this is not a very feminist viewing of the bell jar and it kind of reduces it to, oh, pretty woman putting on makeup. Personally, I don't like this cover. I think it looks dated. Compare that to uh, these other versions. I think the concentric circles works well because it's kind of like the spiraling into depression and madness almost. And it's a bit more, it's, I, I like the simplicity of the graphics. A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. Cannibal. Serial killer. I love the tight crop. So I love the use of like a classical painting with a modern font. It just has a really cool dark academia aesthetic to it. That's the US version, but then let's look at the UK version. So to me, the UK version gives a little bit more comedy like i'm not exactly sure what this pineapple is representing i don't think it's the worst cover but if i was in the bookstore i'd definitely pick up this one tonally very completely different <laughs> ah! it's time to play that game again three two one guess what book this is it's it's the great gatsby for reference this is the original great gatsby cover this one is jazzy it's new york you've got the lights you've got the nudes in her eyes you've got the the green light which also looks like a tear we've got beautiful painting it's slightly dated not necessarily marketing towards a younger audience but the cover is without a doubt iconic and then you have this like firstly like whoa nipple warning just it's a jump scare i have not read the great gatsby but i imagine that this doesn't necessarily represent the book i really love this one now this one isn't even an official published edition See the gentleman i love yellow the fact that he's holding the y and it's a cop like just graphically it looks amazing um and yeah let me know if you want this to be a series or if i should do a uk versus usa Boom. Thank you for coming to my presentation. Speaking of presentations, I've been presented with an opportunity to fix my overcooked shrimp 
posher. I'm glad that I now have a proper desk to do that. So Flexi Sport actually gave me the Standing Desk Premium Series E7 in exchange for review. And after using this thing for like 20 years and this is my new setup i get a lot more window light i have so much more space it's a sitting standing desk so it's meant to help with your ergonomics assembly was pretty easy i'd say you do need two people because it is kind of has a really cool under the desk cable duct where you can hide messy cables i mean ignore the rest of those cables i still need to as a certified shorty i find that desks in general are just not built for so us. it's nice that i can finally have something where you can program it to remember whatever height that you set up i've actually been using it a lot and it's nice. pretty sturdy i'd say the higher you go it does wobble very slightly it has a feature called anti-collision i think it needs to be a little bit more sensitive like it works sometimes and it doesn't work other times if you want to purchase your own flexi product i've got the link in the description box below big up flexi for thank you because you're really helping my shrimp posture